Well, I want to thank everyone uh, for coming this afternoon, and I uh, want to welcome our uh, special guest today, uh, Padma Lashmi, and of course our uh, students uh, from the Riverdale Kingsbridge Academy uh, in the Riverdale section of the Bronx. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy our stay in our fantastic capital. Uh, we're here today uh, to uh, kick off uh, something that's uh, very important to the Independent Democratic Conference and, of course, uh, my assembly colleagues, uh, a teen health initiative and fund. Uh, I'm honored to uh, be joined today, as I said, by uh, Padma Lashmi, uh, who many of you may know is an accomplished actress, model, and food expert, and the host of the Emmy Award-winning show on the Bravo Network, uh, Top Chef. And uh, the way we're going to lay out uh, this uh, proposal, I think, is going to go a long way uh, towards making sure our teenagers uh, have adequate uh, needs and education when it comes to teen health issues. Uh, the initiative is really broken up into three parts. Uh, the first part is something that's uh, very important uh, to me, very important to many of us, and certainly uh, Padma uh, has led a national campaign, uh, and that's the issue of endometriosis. Uh, endometriosis, unfortunately, uh, it impacts one out of 10 women uh, in the United States. Uh, and one of the problems is uh, that it's most of the time it's not diagnosed uh, early enough. And uh, in many cases, it affects a woman's reproductive health. Uh, so I think uh, what Padma is doing uh, is just so important uh, because we're making sure that uh, nurses, doctors, uh, and especially our teenagers uh, are educated uh, at a very early age on the telltale signs of endometriosis. Uh, the next piece is uh, teen obesity. Uh, I think everyone knows, unfortunately, the stats are very high, uh, that about 38% uh, of young people in New York State are either obese or overweight. And I think uh, a lot of people fail to recognize uh, the importance between healthy eating, again, something that Padmer has advocated as well through many cookbooks, uh, and also exercise. Uh, so we really want to figure out a way uh, that we really can truly educate young people uh, about uh, the uh, really solving the problem of obesity uh, through healthy eating and exercise. And we also want to tackle the problem of type 2 diabetes. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous increase uh, among young people uh, with diabetes, again, because of the obesity problem. So that's something that's sort of the second uh, point of our whole uh, health initiative. Uh, the third uh, is something that I've been uh, working on now for the past couple of years, uh, and that's teen alcohol and substance abuse. Uh, just when you think you get ahead of the problem, uh, unfortunately, uh, someone comes out with some kind of new designer drug uh, or uh, a lot of the high alcohol, uh, caffeinated beverages, and uh, what it really is doing is encouraging uh, binge drinking. Uh, so I think we really have to educate and do really a better job uh, in educating our young people uh, about uh, the, the, uh, you know, the horrible things that are occurring through uh, synthetic drugs and uh, all of these you know, products that are coming out there, uh, which are nothing more uh, than encouraging kids uh, to binge drink. Uh, and finally, uh, in addition, uh, we are also advocating, uh, we're kicking it off today, and that's why I'm glad we have our uh, teens here from the Bronx, uh, is the uh, first ever uh, teen health and education survey. Uh, I always thought that this was a great idea, and I learned this two years ago. Uh, two years ago, uh, I put forth a cyberbullying census uh, because we really weren't listening to kids, and we really didn't understand the problem uh, until we actually communicated directly with them. And when we did that uh, cyberbullying census, we had over 10,000 young people uh, from across the state of New York who participated uh, in that survey. I hope to replicate that uh, with this new teen health survey. Uh, let's communicate uh, with our young people. Uh, let's find out how much they know about the three areas that we pointed out. Uh, really show them or let them communicate to us and tell us uh, what are the health issues uh, that impact them on a daily lives, because that's the only way we're going to actually solve these problems. And then finally, uh, one of the things uh, that I've been advocating for to get in this year's budget uh, is a teen health education fund, uh, which would be funded by a checkoff box on state income tax forms. Uh, that is a way for us uh, to build up this campaign uh, and make sure that people uh, use that checkoff uh, to generate revenue. Uh, 
Uh, if you uh, know about the uh, tax checkoff, they've been very successful uh, in sometimes generating as much as a million dollars a year. Uh, we did it effectively with uh, breast cancer research. Uh, we did it with the 9-11 uh, uh, Memorial Victims Funds, uh, and I hope to replicate uh, that positive result uh, in being able uh, to uh, get the money that's available uh, for uh, teen health. So uh, that's something that's important to me, and I'm, I'm glad I'm joined here uh, by all of my colleagues. Uh, but now I'd like to uh, call up uh, someone who is uh, really leading uh, not only a New York State effort, but a national effort on uh, really uh, health initiatives that affect our teens, uh, Padma Lashmi. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Senator Klein and the IDC for inviting me here. I, um, I grew up in New York. And um, it's a very emotional moment to be up here, so I'm really honored to be speaking um, to all of you. Uh, as Senator Klein said, endometriosis is something that affects one in 10 women. Um, 176 million women worldwide have it, and um, most of the women who have it don't get diagnosed or get misdiagnosed for at least a decade. Um, I didn't get diagnosed until I was 36, and that's abominable because I have good health insurance and always have, and I have access to the med best medical care on both coasts of this country, and I have doctors in my family, and I was still mismanaged, and it wasn't because I didn't know something was wrong. Um, how many people in this room know what endometriosis is? Okay. For those of you who don't know, I'll tell you very simply. Endometriosis is when the lining of a woman's uterus, where a baby is born from, where it's you know, nurtured for nine months, when that lining uh, does not get expelled or uh, doesn't come out of the body once a month when a girl or woman has her period. The body's unable to expel that lining, which normally is sloughed off and expelled by the body naturally. What happens in a patient who has endometriosis is that it gets reabsorbed by the body, and that tissue is really juicy, it's really fertile, right? Because by nature, its very existence is so it can nurture an embryo into a fetus and into a healthy baby. And that tissue then becomes reanimate, it gets, comes alive again, and it travels all through the body cavity, everywhere. 20 years ago, we didn't have the technology to do anything about it. My mother had an appendectomy. No one told her she had endometriosis. They used to just take out all your plumbing. They just gave you a hysterectomy. And now we have the technology. What we don't have is a lot of research on the younger patients who have it. I miss sometimes four or five days of school a month. That's too much. That's too much SAT prep, that's too much hockey practice, that's too much math club, that's too much you know, drama, whatever you're into, that is too much. And then as um, after college, there were lots of days when I had to cancel jobs um, or I had to miss work. That's a lot of wage loss that also uh, shouldn't be there. And we never say at the EFA that this is a woman's health issue. It clearly is because you have to have a uterus to have it. We say that it's a family issue because I can talk to you and so can my co-founder about the physical ramifications about this disease. But I can also tell you as a patient that there are very serious emotional components to this disease. A woman should be allowed to savor her life or a young girl should be allowed to prepare for her future without the shackle of chronic pain, especially when we have treatment. And I believe that finding this out in a young woman's life will change the course of her life critically. And the disease develops as a young girl's sexuality and her reproductive system develops. You get it when you start having your period which, you know, is a difficult thing to learn to deal with anyway when you're at that tender age of 13 or 12 or 16. But imagine if your classmate is fine, but you are not. Imagine if your college roommate just pops to Advil and hops off to hockey practice, and you're taking Vicodin, you're on a heating pad, you can't think straight, it, it messes with your hormones, 
And I think that both male and female adolescents should just know about this as part and parcel of their whole education. And so that even if it's a young man and he sees his older sister or his mother or a teacher suffering from it, that he can say, hey, you know, maybe you don't know about this, but I learned about this in school. Maybe you have it. You know, maybe we can look and find you a specialist. Wouldn't that be amazing? Then we can empower the men in our lives who love us to also be, you know, co-crusaders in all of our well-being. And we engage the whole society in bettering each other's lives. And we become better as a whole. And that's why I love what Senator Klein and his colleagues are doing because they look at a student holistically. And they're saying, yes, we have to educate and raise the academic levels of our youth. But if they're not healthy, then they're not able to learn in whatever way that is. And the argument about where that should be done is kind of irrelevant. It needs to be done. And so we owe it to the young people in our lives, in our city, in our state, to help them with issues that are affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Senator Diane Savino. Thank you, Senator Klein, and thank you, Padma, for that um, sharing your own personal story. You know, I've been in the legislature now um, eight years, and for almost the entire length that we've been here, we've been talking about how to tackle some of the problems that face our youth, particularly the health disparities that they face whether it's obesity and it's linked to diabetes, the failure to have access to outdoor um, exercise, which leads again to obesity and diabetes and some of the other common problems, the rate of asthma among our youth. There's so many problems that we know that young people today face that we didn't face when we were young. And so we're always trying to find a way to do some outreach, to do some education, and to kind of change that outcome for the young people. <laughs> But I look around at the young children that are here today, and particularly for the girls, they're about to enter that age, that mystifying time in the life of a young woman or an adolescent, where her body begins to kind of go to war with you. You go through all these changes. You know, some of them Padma talked about. It's a frightening period. It's exhilarating. You're not a baby anymore, but you're not a grown-up. But mostly, you're embarrassed, right? Think of the women in the room. Remember that horrible time when you were 13? You're embarrassed by the things that are happening to you, and even if you have a great relationship with your mother or your grandmother or an older sister, you're embarrassed sometimes just to ask simple questions like, what's happening to me? And if you don't have those conversations with people, or worse, people you have those conversations with don't know either, you don't get the right information. That's why this initiative is so important, for young girls to be given information that they otherwise might not get. As Padma said, she belonged to a family of doctors in some respect, people who are highly educated. But unless you've experienced it, you don't quite understand the impact of endometriosis. Luckily, I don't have it. But I've had friends I've seen suffered terribly with it. And I can remember when they were 16 and 15, the same thing would happen to them. They'd have to take a few days off from school. They appeared to be in so much pain. And the rest of us kind of just dealt with, you know, our monthly friend is what they used to call us. I never considered her a friend, but <laughs> every girl goes through something different. And if you don't have the information and no one gives you the assistance or the guidance, you could suffer for years. Most young women don't have their first gynecological visit with a doctor until they're sexually active. So years could go by before they even get an internal exam, before they even have the opportunity to talk to a doctor. But even when they go to the doctor, most of the time, they're too embarrassed to ask the doctor. They don't want to, they don't, or they don't know what to ask the doctor. So we're going to help provide that information through this teen initiative. We're going to find ways to give information to young women so that they can avoid waiting until they're 36, suffering years. We can eliminate that. We've taken a lot of steps in this state over the years, trying to do outreach on breast cancer, a few years ago, we took a bold step going forward, expanding access to the HPV vaccine for young women so we can eradicate cervical cancer in our lifetime. We can do the same thing with endometriosis. We can do the same thing with childhood obesity. We can do the same thing with diabetes. And we can do it if we provide information to people so they can make 
the right, right health care decisions for themselves and their families. So I want to thank Senator Klein for leading this effort. I want to thank Padma for telling her personal story. I see my colleagues from the Assembly, other members of the IDC. This is critically important. And most importantly, people from the media, you're here. You can help tell Padma's story and talk about what young girls face as they make that transition from adolescence to young womanhood. It's a terrifying time for many of us, but we can help make it less scary by doing what we're doing here today. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Senator Malcolm Smith. He's never been a girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't but done that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Klein, again, and thank you for uh, your bold leadership, willing to take on issues that are important to uh, the people throughout the state. Uh, Padma, uh, your uh, personal story was very touching, um, and it was touching for me. I have five sisters in addition to daughters, and and I've witnessed uh, uh, young ladies going through uh, that moment and, and that sickness and my sisters who could not go to class that day and how uh, at that time I did not realize uh, what they were going through. Um, but obviously over time, uh, I've learned to understand what endometriosis uh, does to you and how it impacts you and it impacts your whole family. I can tell you what my sisters were going through their, their crisis moment, um, as they called it. Uh, it was very trying on the entire family. So, Padma, I appreciate uh, your sharing your thoughts, and I really appreciate Senator Klein for this uh, Healthy Teens Initiative because it touches personally uh, to within my family. Uh, with regard to uh, the obesity and diabetes and the survey, the Bible says very clearly that the young will lead. Uh, the young will lead only if uh, we as elected officials and public leaders keep them healthy. Uh, the importance of these young people here today, I hope, underscores how significant they are to what government leaders need to be doing. Not only do we need to try to keep them on the straight and narrow with support as they get educated, but we need to help give them guidance, uh, some of the guidance that I think we got when we were younger. So this initiative today, uh, which I do believe is going to have an impact, as you many of you know, you've got young people that go on these drinking binges and eating binges, and it's just something that we've got to tackle. So uh, I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues, with the IDC, also from the Assembly, some in Crespo in particular, uh, for all your leadership on this as well. And uh, we need to move this forward. Padma, um, I can't tell you how much I love you and appreciate all that you've done for us on a national level. And Senator Klein, as a personal friend, uh, you just continue to wow me in the things that you do, and I really appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Senator David Carlucci. Thank you, Senator Klein, and uh, I want to echo what my colleagues have said today and thank Padma for your effort, for your leadership, for lending uh, your name, credibility, and celebrity uh, to this important cause. And like was talked about, uh, this is really, this Teen Health Education Fund, uh, this is an investment in our future. Uh, right now, I have the distinct honor and privilege to serve as chairman of the Mental Health Committee in the Senate, and right now we're facing some real challenging times. Uh, we've just been hit with a $500 million cut to Medicaid and people with developmental disabilities, and we're going to have to find ways to reduce costs in Medicaid. There's no question about it. But if we don't educate our teens, if we don't educate our children and future generations about these important issues and about important decisions that can be made, then we're, we're really failing. And we can do that by investing today, uh, by something as simple as a checkoff box on your tax return that we fought for to put in this budget. And we're thankful that Padma's here, uh, that our colleagues in the assembly are joining us today to make sure that that ends up in this final budget. And by doing that, when these teens are in our position wearing these suits, and, uh, or, or whatever, whatever type of, whatever they're gonna wear in 10 Bad years from now, there we go. <laughs> Chef jackets. <laughs> but when they're here today, that we've actually made a difference by investing today and drop the cost of health care, uh, drop the instances of childhood uh, obesity or diabetes or endometriosis, um, and getting the help that they need. So, uh, Senator Klein, thank you for leading this cause. Padma, thank you for being here today, and look forward to working with you to make sure that this ends up in the final budget. Thank you. I'm uh, very proud that we're joined today uh, by uh, three of my Assembly colleagues. Uh, first up, I'd like to call up uh, Marcos Crispo. Uh, he's an Assemblyman who I'm proud to represent areas in the uh, Soundview Castle Hill community. Uh, thanks for coming. Thank you, Senator. Uh, first, let me uh, 
I mean, thank you for your efforts. Uh, we worked uh, well together with the cyberbullying initiative, and that really uh, demonstrated uh, that these efforts can't be done in a vacuum from Albany in terms of addressing what's happening on the ground with our youth. And, uh, and, and now we're taking that initiative further with this uh, health awareness campaign uh, to the IDC members, to Padma. Since we're all personalizing this, I have a two-month-old baby girl at home, and now I know what to look for. Uh, you asked how many of us were aware. I, I didn't raise my hand because I honestly did not know. And now I know. And that's what this is about. And furthermore, you know, this initiative encompasses a lot more than just one uh, health uh, crisis. It's about a holistic view of issues that affect uh, teenagers and young people. We're talking about obesity. We're talking about diabetes. We're talking about substance abuse. Um, it's unfortunate that in, in this uh, climate, economic climate, we're looking at uh, certain revenue raisers that, that present problematic situations and the impact that they can have. Uh, but what it comes down to is that we can't just look at the easy way out and say, we're gonna disavow, we're gonna, we're gonna negate your options to choose this or that. What we wanna do is educate people and say why you should choose one thing over the other. Why should you choose to eat better? Why should you choose to exercise? And we have to look at this from a very holistic point of view and we can learn uh, so much from our youth. We saw that with the cyberbullying initiative and we're seeing that with healthcare, especially in today's diverse communities. You look at the growth of the Latino community throughout uh, the country. It is said, according to statistics, that one out of every two ch Latino children born after the year 2000 will suffer from type two diabetes, 50%. That is an unconscionable number that we must address and that's what this initiative is about. And so I'm very proud to stand with you and join in this effort to make sure that we address this and provide them an opportunity to educate us on what we need to do. Thank you, Senator. Thank Uh, next up, uh, another assembly member from the Bronx who uh, we share uh, several communities with, assembly member Luis Sepulveda. Good afternoon. Uh, first, uh, Senator Klein, I want to thank you for the great work you're doing, uh, especially with this initiative, Padma. Thank you so much. You know, I, if we're going to continue to personalize, I grew up with four sisters, and I can tell you they would have benefited years ago if we had this information. And a lot of the times, it's just simple information that you provide to individuals, and to provide the resources for this. Uh, Checkoff um, is a fantastic way of raising revenue in the time that we had these economic crises. So this is going to go a long way to helping our community. I only hope that the, uh, the information is also provided in Spanish and other languages because, you know, we represent, uh, Senator, uh, Assemblyman Crespo and I represent uh, one of the poorest districts in the entire state. And uh, unfortunately, there is a correlation between poverty and obesity and diabetes. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the children that we represent, uh, sometimes their family don't have the, the monies, don't take home a paycheck to be able to provide adequate food, adequate sustenance for the children that we represent. And so to take this initiative to teach our children, uh, we have to provide the funding, we have to make things easier for these families. But providing the simple information, better ways to eat, uh, nutrition, exercise, and other health issues will go a long way to helping the children in our community. And so I thank you again so much. I thank the members of the IDC. I thank my assembly colleagues because this is a wonderful uh, initiative to take. And I am so proud that it came from my uh, Senator Jeff Klein. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, uh, Assemblyman uh, from Queens, uh, someone who I had the pleasure of working with uh, for many years, uh, Assemblyman Francisco Moya. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, I want to applaud Senator Klein for once again really uh, tackling the issues that affect uh, teenagers throughout the state of New York. Uh, again, also to Padma for uh, her leadership on this issue, uh, and my colleague Assemblymember Crespo uh, for what he, they've been doing to educate uh, the teens that really uh, don't have access to information. Uh, and in communities of color, we see this a lot, where childhood obesity is on the rise. Uh, in Corona, Queens, last year they did a report that I had the highest rate in the city of childhood obesity. It's a lack of access, it's a lack of education, and for us, I think that putting programs like this together are so important for the future of the state of New York and the children that we represent as well. Uh, and if it wasn't for the leadership that you see up here, we would not be doing this. And I think that they need the uh, support. Uh, that they have gotten and that they need to continue to receive that from uh, state government. So I just wanted to say thank you again to Senator Klein for your leadership uh, and your vision uh, for what you're doing for all these uh, wonderful uh, teenagers here in the state of New York. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you all very much. And again, I want to thank uh, the Riverdale Kingsbridge Academy uh, for making the trip up here again. Thank you so, so much. Let's give them a hand, everyone. And we'd be happy to answer any questions. I mean, I, I'm not here to speak as a professional dietitian, but I will say that those drinks are banned in my home too, so <laughs> I'm pretty much on that side of the argument. Um, you know, I think you also have to give all citizens a healthier alternative. We're bombarded with a lot of marketing, and we've also forgotten how to eat properly. Um, you know, we've forgotten that with pennies you can make lemonade and you can do other things. You know, kids used to have lemonade stands. They don't have those anymore. Um, and we don't teach our children anymore when things grow. And you're used to just going to the supermarket and buying tomatoes in January, and you know, nobody knows. So I think there, it's a very layered and deep issue that needs to be addressed at a, at a young age. And again, you know, taught part and parcel with a lot of other things when, when children are growing and learning about themselves and their bodies and the world they live in. I don't think you can um, all of a sudden you know, impose uh, some prohibitions um, on certain aspects of a person's diet without really looking at how this person is eating and why they're eating that way. Uh, I, don't, I think you know, the senator and his colleagues were very very right when they said, you know, you look at these communities and the poor communities are ones that have the diabetes, that have the obesity, because it's cheaper to go to McDonald's. I and mean, I'm not singling McDonald's up, but it's cheaper to get fast food than to get, you know, a slice of roast chicken and some green beans. Um, and that shouldn't be. Um, I'm lucky in New York City, I shop at the Essex Street Market. And so we have a very great butcher in the Essex Street Market who also takes food stamps. You know, I shop there, I bought my Thanksgiving turkey there, and they also serve the local community that, you know, lives in the big buildings by the FDR. So we need to have a more community-based approach where um, we all work cohesively in neighborhoods and cities and that we take proprietorship over our children, whether they're actually our own children or not. Um, you know, I support it, but I don't know that it's going to prevent someone from buying two cups and then therefore increasing the paper waste, to be honest. But, I mean, I, you know, I don't know why you need 32 ounces of a car. I can't even get my hand around that. Um, you know, I, and there have been times when I've gone to the movie theater and stuff, I mean, you all have too, and they're like, you know, with a dollar more, you can get a large popcorn and you can get a lot. And I don't need a large popcorn because I know I'll eat it if it's sitting in front of me. I'd rather pay you an extra dollar to just give me the small one. You know, I, no, honestly, like, we've just gotten in this system, this mentality of big is better and more value. You know, what do you, is it really valuable to eat shrimp and steak and a, you know, all you can eat salad bar with Russian dressing that you might as well have a hamburger for? You know, that's not salad, you know, that's like dip. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, you can have a little bit of it as long as you go out and you play basketball for half an hour. You know, a diet is just like managing your checkbook. It's basic arithmetic. Mm -hmm. So if you eat 2,000 calories, you should expend 2,000 calories. And I think we have to support our children in finding fun ways to have them exercise. And whenever young mothers or journalists or mommy bloggers always come to me and they say, you know, I'm having trouble finding, you know, I'm making my child eat well. And then my first question is, how do you eat? Because that's a big thing. You know, you can't say, well, you can't have a sugary drink, but mommy's going to have a Diet Coke. You just, it doesn't work. No, she's on another network. <laughs> I can't, I mean, I'm, I, I honestly can't comment because I don't watch her show. But that's not a knock against her. I don't watch my own show. 
course, I know what happens on my show, but um, I, you know, I, I can't comment on another person's show. <laughs> No, this is yeah. This is just a tax check off. As I said earlier, uh, have been quite successful if we build enough, uh, you know, of an information campaign and what it's all about. And I'm very hopeful that we can uh, generate anywhere from uh, a half a million to a million dollars a year. Is there an off topic question? Can we do that after when we're finished all with this? I'll be more than happy to. Uh, I have a question. You're talking about a checkoff um, at the same time that the budget that's going forward. Well, first, we didn't support it in uh, our one house budget resolution, and I'm hopeful that uh, at the end of the day, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. so it's still, it's still and the assembly as well. Uh, well, again, we're, you know, we, we made ourselves clear. We made ourselves clear in the assembly. Yeah, we made ourselves clear. No, it's on topic. Okay, if you let me answer your question, I'll be more than happy to. We, in our one house budget resolution, uh, we eliminated uh, the governor's cuts and the changes, and so did the assembly. That's where we stand now, uh, both houses in agreement. Any other questions? Thank you all, no, let's, I'll, I'll talk to anyone outside. Thank you all for coming, I really appreciate it.